join kids hat family the boys in my class are very mean to me they are so tall and big that i always have to listen to whatever they say i am afraid to disagree with them size has nothing to do with courage tofu you don't have to be afraid just because you are short have you heard the story of peter pan peter pan Once upon a time in London the darlings went out to a dinner party leaving their three children Wendy John and Michael at home After Wendy had tucked her younger brothers John and Michael to bed, she went to read a book. She heard a boy sobbing outside her window. He was flying. There was a little fairy fluttering around him. Wendy opened the window to talk to him. "Hello. Who are you? Why are you crying?" "My name is Peter Pan. My shadow wouldn't stick to me." "Don't worry. Come inside." Peter agreed. Wendy took his shadow and sewed it to his shoe tips. Now his shadow followed him wherever Peter Pan went. He was delighted. Thank you so much. Why don't you come with me to my home? The Neverland. I live there. with my fairy tinker bell oh what a wonderful idea let me wake up john and michael too could you teach us how to fly yes of course get them we will all fly together and so it was five little figures flew out of the window of the darlings and headed towards neverland as they flew over the island peter pan told the children more about his homeland that island is neverland all the children who get lost come and stay with tinkerbell and me the indians also live in neverland The mermaids live in the lagoon around the island and a very mean pirate called Captain Hook keeps troubling everyone. Captain Hook. Yes, a crocodile bit off his one arm. So the captain had to put a hook in its place. Since then, he's afraid of crocodiles and rightly so. If the crocodile ever found Captain Hook, it will eat up the rest of what it couldn't eat the last time. Soon they landed on the island. And to the surprise of Wendy, John, and Michael, Peter Pan let them in. through a small opening in a tree inside the tree was a large room with children inside it 
some were huddled by the fire in a corner and some were playing amongst themselves. Their faces lit up when they saw Peter Pan, Tinkerbell and their guests. Hello everyone, this is Wendy, John and Michael. They will be staying with us from now on. Hello Wendy, John and Michael. A few days passed and they settled into a routine. Wendy would take care of all the children in the day and would go out with Peter Pan and her brothers in the evening to learn more about the island. She would cook for them and stitch new clothes for them. She even made a lovely new dress for Tinkerbell. <laughs> One evening, as they were out exploring the island, Peter Pan warned everyone and said, Hide! Hide! Pirates! And they've kidnapped the Indian princess, Tiger Lily. They've kept her there, tied up by the rocks near the water. Peter was afraid and the princess would drown if she fell into the water. So, in a voice that sounded like Captain Hook, he shouted instructions to the pirates who guarded her. You fools! Let her go at once! Do it before I come there or else I will throw each one of you into the water! The pirates got scared and immediately released the princess. She quickly dived into the water and swam to safety of her home. Soon everyone found out how Peter Pan had rescued the princess. When Captain Hook found out how Peter Pan had tricked his men, he was furious and swore to have his revenge. That night, Wendy told Peter Pan that she and her brothers wanted to go back home since they missed their parents. She said if the lost children could also return to her world, they could find nice homes for them. Peter Pan didn't want to leave Neverland. But for the sake of the lost children, he agreed although a bit sadly. He would miss his friends dearly. The next morning, all the lost children left with Wendy, John and Michael. But on the way, Captain Hook and his men kidnapped all of them. He tied them and kept them on one of his ships. As soon as Peter found out about it, he rushed to the ship. He swung himself from a tree's branch onto the deck of the ship where all the children were tied up.
he swung his sword bravely and threw over the pirates who tried to stop him. Quickly, he released everyone from the captor's ties. Wendy, John, Michael and Tinkerbell helped all the children into the water where their friends from the Indian camp were ready with smaller boats to take them to safety. Peter Pan now went looking for Captain Hook. Let us finish this forever, Hook. Yes, Peter Pan, you have caused me enough trouble. It is time that we finish this. With his sword drawn, he raced towards Peter Pan. Quick on his feet, Peter Pan stepped aside and pushed Hook into the sea where the crocodile was waiting to eat the rest of Hook. Everyone rejoiced as Captain Hook was out of their lives forever. Everybody headed back to London. Mr. and Mrs. Darling were so happy to see their children and they agreed to adopt the lost children. They even asked Peter Pan to come and live with them. But Peter Pan said he never wanted to grow up so he and Tinkerbell will go back to Neverland. Do visit us sometime Peter Pan. I will Wendy, promise. And he flew out of the window with Tinkerbell by his side. Thank you, Tia. I feel much better. The next time the boys are mean to me, I will find a nice way out. Very good, Tofu. Now come, I can see Mom's car right there. Today I am very happy. I met one of my friends who was acting all greedy and selfish in class. So I told him the story of the Pied Piper of Hamelin and he soon understood the lesson. Really Tofu? I haven't heard this one. I would love to hear it from you. The Pied Piper of Hamelin Once upon a time, there was a town named Hamelin. The town was beautiful, bustling with energy and wealth. But no sooner the happiness of the town was ruined by a plague. Plague of Rats There were rats everywhere. So much so that the people of the town didn't even have a place to keep a step without tripping over the rats. There were rats of every size, shape every age and color. Nothing worked as a remedy. Not even the cats were able to control the plague of rats. Giving up, the authorities decided to announce a reward of 10 bags of gold to anyone who could help to get rid of the rats. One day, a strange looking man came to the town. He was dressed in their traditional dress, but all red in color, with a long peculiar nose 
and big wide eyes, he adorned his head with a feather in his hat. He went to the authorities and said, Ah, uh, I have a solution for your problem. I assure you that not a single rat would live in this beautiful town. But I want ten gold bags that you have promised as prize. The authorities were not very sure of his commitment but still allowed him to give it a try as they had no other option. Soon the strange looking man took out a Pied Piper from his pocket and started playing a very strange tune. Within no time, all the rats started coming out and following him. From every nook and corner of the town, so many rats came out that the whole street was filled with them. Very strangely, the rat started following the Pied Piper who was playing the strangest tune ever heard. The Pied Piper took them to the town's river and entered into it. In no time, all the rats mesmerized by his tune fell into the river and drowned. There were rejoices in the town, celebrations all over. Soon, the Pied Piper went to the authorities to claim his prize money. But since their work was done and they thought that this plague would never return, they shun him off and asked him to leave without giving him a single penny. What selfish people are these? I did them a favor, freed them from such a bad epidemic and all they could care was to be greedy and ungrateful? Now look how I will teach these selfish people a lesson. The Pied Piper took out his pipe once again and started playing another strange tune. A tune that no one had ever heard before. In no time, all the children of the town, mesmerized by the music, started following the Pied Piper. The children were so lost in his tune that they didn't realize that they have come out to the outskirts of the town. The Pied Piper took them to a cave and let them in. He kept playing the tune till all the children were inside the cave. He then closed the cave with a huge stone. Only two kids were left in the entire town. A boy who was hard of hearing and a girl who had hurt her legs so badly that she couldn't keep up the pace with the rest of the kids. These two kids went back 
and told their parents about the Pied Piper and how he lured all the children into the cave. Soon the authorities went begging to the Pied Piper and requested him to let their children out. This time they promised to reward him with 20 gold bags. I don't trust you any longer. I want my prize money beforehand. Soon he was handed over his prize money and he left never to be seen again. The children were freed from the cave and the parents hugged them and cried. Watching this, the authorities said, We surely have learned a lesson. This man came out of nowhere and saved us from an epidemic. All that we did in return was to be selfish and ungrateful. He surely taught us a lesson of not to be greedy and selfish. That night, the town rejoiced and celebrated like a festival. It still said that in the town of Hamelin, if you ever go and listen carefully, you might hear the beautiful sound of the Pied Piper. Tofu, I'm so proud of you. You must be a little naughty, but you surely are a good boy. <laughs> Tia and Tofu are going on a school trip while traveling in the bus. I am so excited, Tia. This is my first school camp. It'll be so much fun. Tofu, I know you are excited. But you should remember what parents told us. We have to be safe and careful throughout. Tia, I am a big boy and this is my first adventure. I'll be cautious throughout, I promise. I am so happy we are going together. La 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 la. It's a camp, Tofu, so I don't want you wandering around alone at all. We'll have lots of fun but we'll stick together and be like a team. Like Batman and Robin. Like Hansel and Gretel. Hansel and Gretel? I haven't seen that movie. It's not a movie, little one. It's a story of two siblings, just like us. I think this is the best time for me to tell you this story. So, sit tight. Hansel and Gretel Once a poor woodcutter had a son and a daughter named Hansel and Gretel. One day they get an evil stepmother. One night the stepmother tells the woodcutter the kids eat too much. We'll be starving soon. So let's leave the children in the forest and get rid of them. What are you saying? No! But the wife was very persistent and she kept talking until he was convinced. Hansel overhears their conversation. So that night Hansel goes out and collects shiny white stones. We'll find our way back home. Stop crying, Gretel. Hansel, 
tomorrow we are going to die. What do we do? Don't worry, we will survive. Good night, Gretel. Hansel hides the stones and sleeps. The next morning, the stepmother takes the kids to the forest. Hansel keeps dropping stones on the ground, thinking... We can follow these stones home. Children, wait by this big tree. Just sit quietly here and I'll be back to get you. But she never comes back to get them. Let's wait for nightfall, Gretel. I dropped a trail of white stones all the way here. So, with the moonlight shining on them, we could get back home. I am so scared. <laughs> So at night, Hansel and Gretel follow the shiny stones out of the forest. The stepmother was secretly angry. A few days later, the stepmother again tricks the children. Let's go have a picnic in the forest. Here, take this bread to eat later. We'll go in the morning. This time, the stepmother locked their room at night and so Hansel couldn't pick up any shiny stones. Next morning, on their way to the forest, Hansel crumbled his bread and left a trail of crumbs instead. Deep in the forest. This looks like a good spot. You both can take a nap here while I go and cut some wood. Hansel and Gretel knew she wouldn't come back again. They slept. and waited for nightfall again. When they woke up, the birds and wild animals had eaten up all the crumbs. Now we will never find our way home. I am so upset for us, Gretel. Hansel, don't lose hope. Let's walk and maybe we find our home.
after walking the entire day. They find a small house. Look there! A cookie house! Wow! Oh! The house is made of chocolate with a roof of cake and sugar windows. Come, come! The hungry children didn't even stop to think. I want a big piece of the cake roof. Yum! Suddenly, they hear a voice. Children, come inside. You seem hungry. I'll make you yummy food right now. The lady was an evil witch. The kids go in the house with her. It's a trap. <laughs> I like to eat kids. I made this house to lure you in. Now I'll fatten the boy up and make a tasty treat for myself. Her eyes were red. She had terrible eyesight, but a good sense of smell. She locks Hansel in a cellar. She makes Gretel do all the housework, all the chores. Hansel and Gretel cried and begged, but she had no mercy on them. Come on, girl. Cook something delicious for your brother. You should be fat enough to be cooked by the end of this month. A week passed. Hansel ate delicious food. While Gretel was always hungry. Every morning, the old witch went to Hansel's cellar and shouted, Show me your fingers, boy. Let me check how much fatter you've gotten. But Hansel would always stick out a little bone for her to feel. Because the witch couldn't see very well. She was furious that Hansel was staying so thin. One day, she lost her patience and shouted at Gretel. I don't care anymore. I'll cook thin Hansel today and eat him anyhow. And start the oven. Gretel had no choice and she started doing what the evil witch told her. Now get in and see if the water is boiling enough. How can I get inside the oven? Please show me so that I can check the water. Stupid girl. What is wrong with you? It's so easy. You just need to step here and... Ah! Gretel cleverly pushed the old woman in the oven and shut the door. The vicious witch burned to a crisp. Gretel rushed to the cellar and set Hansel free. Hansel, my dear brother, the witch is dead. 
Now let's run out of here and find our home. How happy they were. While running out of the house, they saw wooden chests all over in the witch's room. They were filled with gems and gold. The children fill their pockets with as many gems as possible and left the house. Hansel and Gretel walked for a few hours when they got to a bridge that they knew well and was close to their house. Hansel and Gretel could finally see their father at the port, looking miserable because his wife had died. My dearest children, I'm so happy you both are alive. I am sorry for letting you go. The three hugged and precious gems started to fall out of Gretel's pockets. Both the children emptied their pockets in their father's lap. They told their father about the evil witch and how they got her treasure. Oh my God, I am happy my kids came back safe. I will never leave you alone now. Finally, they could have a carefree life and lived together, happily ever after. Ooh, witches are scary. We are about to reach the forest camp very soon. Don't leave my hand when we go hiking in the forest. I want us to be like Hansel and Gretel. I promise not to go anywhere alone. Does this forest have a cookie house or a witch, Tia? Tofu, it's just a story. Hansel and Gretel shared an adventure like a team. Don't worry about any witch. It's just a camp. I hope we find a cookie house like Hansel and Gretel. Cookie house, yum! That sounds wow! I am hungry now. Give me the chocolates from the bag tier, please. For your favourite rhymes, stories and more, join Kids Hat family. Subscribe here.